So this state of libographic union uh, was st had started in 2014 as a way for we not to have to have the same pr the same uh, talks year and year again. So every mo important project or secondary project have to present the, the progresses over the previous year. So if there are just progresses, you just see that the uh, a resuming activity of what was the previous year here and whoever is interested is here to talk of the developers themselves. Uh, we shall start with dark table. So dark table is a raw converter and program to manage your digital images, processing images with high precision. Dark table wasn't presented at last LGM, so here's an overview of the last two years. So Liquify, also known as eye warping GIMP, allows to move image versions around widely, around widely used to make people look slimmer. The automatic perspective correction is an upcoming feature that has already landed in our development branch. It allows one-click correction of photos by analyzing the image content to find horizontal and vertical lines. The Hebrew translation also brought general support for RTL languages, right-to-left language that is. And they included high DPI and 4K supported, which allows Darktable automatically recognize insanely big screens and adapt it to that. It also allows for Lua scripting. And it's reaching a point where serious workflow tools can be added to Darktable. Examples of scripts in Lua are collected on GitHub. Support for a huge number of new cameras was added among them raw formats of non-buyer cameras like Fuji's x -trans. So, Another note, it's not always that the notes in here having text will be with the slides, because some of the projects sent unmatching slides. So LUT is short for lookup table. It's a way to specify how colors should be mapped. That's used to emulate classic film stock, but also as a means to color calibrate the photos to match different lighting situations. Dark table's denoising is quite good already, but there are still ways to improve it. So you are changing how we internally process the image to get better results in the shadows. Dark table has always required x86 platforms. However, thanks to recent changes, we managed to run Dark table on a Raspberry Pi. We have that thing with us. If anyone wants to see it, just ask. At LGM14, we added a new in-painting method to recover blown highlights. Now, we want to try to make it better as it can introduce some artifacts to the image. And last but not least, we ported Dark Table to GTK3 in the last year. Unfortunately, supporting GTK3 is quite cumbersome because they break things with every release, which causes more work than it should. And then we change to FreeCAD. So, for who doesn't know it, FreeCAD is a 3D modeling, modeling application made to model things to be built in the real world, from electronic components, objects to be 3D printed, manufactured products, and all the way up to engineering projects and buildings. Almost all of FreeCAD's functionality is accessible via Python. Uh, we have a new release of FreeCAD, Right now, with more than a year of work, many improvements in all its areas and a big list of powerful new plugins. This brings FreeCAD closer and closer to the perfect, stable, comfortable, user-friendly modeling application we all want it to be. More and more projects are now using FreeCAD as their main modeling tool, and the results are appearing everywhere on the net. The big highlight of this release is the new Expressions engine, which offers a whole new range of parametric possibilities, such as performing calculations on the fly in object properties, or referencing any property or any object in other objects or in spreadsheet, too, spreadsheet cells. So it's looking amazing. And we have now a finite element analysis tools 
which can calculate efforts in objects when they are submitted to real-life pressures. It received a lot of work and made huge progresses. A new path model for e CNC has been added in this release, which allows FreeCAD to calculate two paths around objects. These two paths are then exported to the machines that will cut a real piece out of a block of material, such as wood or metal. And finally, many new side projects have blossomed along around FreeCAD. Those can be used as plugins inside FreeCAD itself and offer new functionalities such as optical calculations, creation of assemblies, automatic placement of bolts and screws, or easy addition of dimensions and annotations. Big steps are expected forward with the next release, with many improvements to the existing functionalities and tools already waiting the development pipeline, as well as support for the newest versions of libraries like Python 3, Qt5, Open Cascade technology, VTK, and more. The FreeCAD ecosystem is growing fast. Have a chat with the FreeCAD team here at LGM. I'll just talk for itself. And uh, now GIMP. Um, GIMP has actually been slow to submit his slides, so I have this screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, some of the changes over the last year include uh, PSD support improvements, MyPaint brush support, resurrection of the recently dead intelligent scissors, new experimental handle transformation tool, uh, the merging of an experimental endpoint transformation tool, a new option for file copy image location and PFM file format support. And we have some improvements since the intermediary, intermediary 2.9.2 release. We have new teams. Uh, this is the new default team when I install GIMP from, from Git master. And we have also gray and light teams. Uh, new icon teams. We have painting symmetry for all tools. We have a select fluid command that will remove small and selected areas inside a larger selection. We have a fuzzy select and bucket fill tools that now recognize uh, diagonal neighbors. Uh, that has adoption to that that changes the behavior of the tools. Uh, the My Paint Brush tool is now fast enough and is enabled by default. Previously, you have to hide to search for it in the playground settings. It supports the tagging of brushes. Uh, we have now color, manage color management for grayscale images, and lots of improvements in the handling of gaggle-based filters, which are where most of the work on the new, new GIMP is, is being done actually. So. That was for GIMP. Now I have the host. Host stands for House of Open Source Technology. 
<laughs> it's a project based in Oman, and part of the Free Open Source Program at the Information Technology Authority, ETA, aiming to support local free open source community in Oman and link its members with international force develop development communities. The idea of the project is to identify an existing and active false software project that is recognized internationally to be further development, developed or customized through a number of Omani false developers around the false community for a specific period of time and maintained by an internationally recognized expert of this area in Oman. So they had a specific team in 2015, um, which is making CTL, which is Improved, Improved Scripting Management, for a lot of projects. So they made that for Scribbles. They didn't quite mark the slide change, so I'll change here. And the, uh, so they have CTL uh, supporting Scribbles, Krita, Darktable, and they have put out a RayKeyM text out library it's a small library that encapsulates the logic for complex text layout and provides a convenient API. Uh, so it cur currently provides bidirectional text support using FreeBD, shaping using Hefbus, with proper script itemization. Due to this, RayKM can support most writing systems covered by Unicode. LibreAKM website is, okay, you have to search it. I think it's not on the light. It's useless for me to try to read it. And there are quite a few projects using RayKM. There is Image Magic, LibGD, Pillow, which is the most important Python library for image manipulation, Pygame, and Blender. I think also they put an extra slide here. Yeah. <coughs> So it's Scribus, which didn't send the slides of its all. So it's Scribus for this presentation. And this. So um, I'd suggest you uh, consider sending a video for next year. <laughs> this is quite a better presentation. Um, this is KD in Live. I, I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's KD in Live or KD in Live? KD in Live. KD Live is fine. So they are an a movie editor which is sending slides. So they have to suffer my reading here. So I guess that's the title slide. At the end of 2013, things looked quite bleak for KDE Live, with Jean Baptiste Mardel struggling as a long developer. But over the course of 2014, Vincent Pinham and others helped him gradually got the wheels turning again. Now, over the past year, KDE Live was regaining coding momentum and performance stability. 
Some much needed refactoring work has been completed, resulting in a massive improvement in the quality and stability of the 15.x releases. So Canyon Live lives again. On the technical side, changes included a new file format, switching to KDE Frameworks 5, and integrated OpenGL and MoveIt to enable GPU effects. Perhaps most important was the decision at the render meeting to improve the editing workflow, the user interface, and focus on the needs of professional users. This resulted, this resulted in workflow improvements like clip library management, automatic compositing, better keyframing, key framing, and render options, and improving improved effects interface as well as main design fixes. KDE Live has become more involved with KDE in a number of ways and initiated regular IRC meetings with the community. The forum is becoming more active and there are more regular bug reporters than ever before. KDE Live is now being used for more and more professional work, from television, web, short film and music videos and even future documentary. Soon, there will be a new modern website, the launch of our community developed logo and the 16.04 and 0.08 releases will make it easier to install a stable and up-to-date version of KDE Live on any Linux distribution. As a community, we are learning from Krita's engagement efforts. We will start publishing artist interviews over the next few months, as well as making it easier for people to get involved in different ways. The ongoing focus of development is on the fast, flexible professional workflow rather than shiny effects, so that free, libre, and open source video editing can become a core part of many more video production environments. So, I had some progress. Ah, now Krita. Krita is a digital 2D painting studio for artists. They have the goal of supporting creating art from sketch to finished image. Krita now also supports hand-drawn animation. Uh, so in 2015, they released Krita 2.9 with a huge number of new features like support for Photoshop style layer, layer styles, transformation masks, multi-document interface, and much, much more. They had another successful Kickstarter campaign where they focused, focused on animation and supporting for large brushes and canvas. Krita has also been ported to QT5. <coughs> they had books published in English, French, and Japanese. A series of tutorials in Imagine FX. Continued successful series of artist interviews on Krita.org. Uh, on 2016, they are on track to release Krita 3.0 with animation support, instant preview, and a host of other features by the end, by the end of this month. Started activing, actively supporting OS X, and another kickstart begins on May 1st, with the goal to porting vector layers to SVG and create a, a new text editor. <coughs> so that's it for Krita. So I have laid out. Um, <coughs> laid out switch it to a Cairo and half bus based renderer. And this opened up a number of new avenues to explore. To start with, fonts. <coughs> After just 10 years, laid out now has some simple textitos. <laughs> and that includes layered color fonts. I remember we making those in, in, in Vienna, it was. Also, many instruments to the engraving tool, which is on this slide, uh, including Open Simplex. So they have based random line offsets and automatically applied line profiles. And there is a workshop on Saturday. <coughs> so this project here has a lot of text. <laughs> so there it goes. Metapolator is an open web tool for making many fonts. Supporters work in a font design space instead of one glyph, one face at a time. 
Metapolator will very soon be ready for type designers to test it and use it in their workflows. And we have finished the import process. So um, they created a Metapolator object model, and then a developer tool emerged. it. Come on. That make it easier to experiment with the technology made, the technology made for Metapolator. The Aten project that was initiated on Metapolator is now based on Aten. This slide is from an application that will be used for documentation and the tech demo. The meeting on Sunday is Inhale Deeply, Aten and Metapolator. We'll talk all about this and give details, answer questions, and officially kick off the Aten, Aten project. So I have Pat David's Pixels, Pixels.us, a community focused on free and open source photography. The community mission statement is to provide tutorials, workflows, and a showcase for high quality photography using free software. So after kicking the idea around LGM 2014, the main site was built and soft launched in August 2014. Um, they enabled forums using Discuss, which launched on April 2015. Since Discuss was launched just over a year ago, it has gained 475 active users. So several free software projects use Discuss as their official forums. Jmeek, Raw Therapy, Photoflow, and Fumulator. This traffic graph here shows page views by week. The first small spike by GMIC here is when they move their forums to discuss. And the second big spike, which is on the E there, is when Raw Therapy moved their forums over. So they met uh, this pixels.us uh, pixels project. And there will be a longer presentation about the Binary community at 14, 40 past 3 on Saturday by Pat David. Is Pat around? I haven't seen... Oh, there he is. Hello. Uh, come on, join photographers and free software supporters at pixels.us. Which leads us to... The Rapid Photo Downloader. Uh, this is a project to import photos and videos from cameras, phones, memory cards, and other set devices at high speed. It can be configured to rename files with meaning meaningful user-specified file names. It can also backup files as they are downloaded. It downloads from any backup, from front end backups to multiple devices simultaneously. It can now handle hundreds of thousands of files at a time. Displaying thumbnails that can be sorted and filtered all while maintaining a responsive UI. The order in which thumbnails are generated prioritize representative samples based on time. I think I should be on the next slide already. Yeah. Using a load balancer, thumbnails are generated asynchronously and in parallel. LibRaw is used to render raw file thumbnails from which a preview cannot be extracted which is the case with Android DNG files, for instance. So, unique to Rapid Photo Downloader is its timeline, which groups photos and videos based on how much time elapsed between consecutive shots. Use it to identify photos and videos taken at different periods in a single day or over consecutive days. The slider adjusts the time elapsed between consecutive shots which is used to build the timeline. In this screenshot, the two rows in black immediately above the four selected rows indicated the files at the time period which was previously downloaded. So, in the past year, it has been ported to libg Photo 2, Python 3, Kt5, and 0MQ. The direct use of libg Photo bypassing GIO 
I was downloaded from all cameras supported by libgphoto. Depending on the desktop environment it's running on, the program will either use GIO to automatically unmount cameras so it can access them, or UDISCs2 to, to manage disk mounts and GUI dev, GU dev mo to monitor camera hot plugin. The developer, Damon Lynch, is he wrong? I don't know. I think he didn't make it has created a common line program to analyze all varieties of raw photos and many videos formats to determine the minimum number of bytes to read to be able to extract the metadata. So the first alpha release is imminent. So this, is, this thing is new for me. Um, VIPS. So there are some notes for it here. VIPS is a free scientific image processing library. It's fast and needs little memory. It's widely used on the web for image resizing. It's used for technical image in research and for photography. It's taken six painful years, but LibVIPS has been rewritten. VIPS 8 was launched in May 2015, with VIPS, VIPS 8.3 coming out this week. The new version is based on GeoObject. It has clean new insides, new bindings, and some interesting new features. Speed and memory use are slightly improved, and the older VIPS 7 interfaces are still supported via compatibility layer. So, uh, sorry. I thought it was on the screen slide. <laughs> Uh, so a couple of talks on Saturday will show some of the ways libvips is being used. And it takes us to the last project, which is the Zimmermot. Uh, it's a little move made with free software. They have finalized the, the pilot research and creation of references, the redesign of characters, storyboard is finished, animatic is finished, and GIMP plugins for storyboarding and animation animation are progressing well. These are the spin-offs of the thing. And pre-production is coming to an end. The pilot should soon be coming to your screens. And with this, we end this painful <laughs> state of the air.